Hi, this is Dave Philippi. We want to thank you for your business, and now we're going to give you a brief overview of our auto rail program. So you notice the ribbon panel here in the center. We got the horizontal rail program, stair rail, gate, and fence. So we'll start with the horizontal rail. I'll click on that. And we recommend that when you're starting out to import a template. And we've got all kinds of templates here. And so you can see how we fill things out. So we'll start with a simple rail first, and then we'll show you some of the features of what this program can do. So I'm going to do an inch and a quarter tube rail. I'm going to load that template. And you see the, the top line is where you put your length of your rail. Here are your posts, you can, which you can uncheck if you're connecting to a wall or a column. Here's the railing height, 42 inches. Down below here is the plate thickness for the post. If you plan on core drilling this job, you just go down here where it says negative number sets below floor and you put a minus number in there. It'll set the post below the floor. Three inches is the bottom bar clearance for this. You can do picket rails, you can do pipe rails, cable rails. Okay. Then you click the members tab and here you select what you want to use for your top bar. So we have custom shapes, we have pipe, we have tube, we have square bar, we have capping and channel, capping no channel, motor tubular handrail, bar channel. We've got just about any kind of shape and size. You can add your own custom shape or your own custom extrusion. Very customizable. Okay. Then the posts here, the bottom rail. Vertical pickets here, you've got choices of either 4 inch maximum gap or fixed center line spacing. You can specify odd or even. If you've got a, if you need a center picket to put a uh, snap on design, you can specify odd number of pickets not to exceed 4 inches. You can add spindles and you can add alternating short pickets. We'll show you that feature here in a second. So I'm just going to click OK here and just click draw. I'll draw the rail and then left click here to, to get the cut list. So there's other templates in here that you may want to explore. So I'll import template. And we have one called alter, alternating short picket. So when you do this, when you go to the members and you go to your vertical pickets, you put in add alternating short pickets and you put in the length that you want. So I click draw here and this will generate a rail that looks like this. And then I'll put the cut list underneath here. Okay. You also have the ability to stop the rail short at the intermediate top bar. So I'm going to do an open top rail only, a load selected template. So when I go to the members again and go to the vertical pickets, I have this option that pops up. I can have the pickets stop at the secondary top rail, or if I uncheck this, it'll take it to the very top of the railing itself. Okay. Other options on here are your end post to top rail connection. You can button cope. You can elbow. That's particularly handy with pipe rail. You can miter. You can shoot the post over the top bar. If you want to put a ball cap on it, you can do that. You can do mid post over top rail as well. Okay. So we'll just miter this. The post spacing. You can do fixed post spacing, maximum post, so the maximum spacing here is 64 inches. You can do fixed with the center line remainder on one end, or you can do fixed on either end if you don't. Now, the other thing is, if you don't want a middle post, you set the maximum post spacing wider than the railing itself, so you don't get a center post. If the holes are already in the floor, you click not applicable and you will be able to key in the center to center dimensions of the posts if they're not evenly spaced. You can put in the spacing on those posts. Okay, So I'm just going to click click draw to pick a point and it draws the railing and you notice that the picket stops at the secondary top bar. We also have the option, let me import this other template, uh, top and bottom. When I go to members, when you go to the vertical pickets, you notice that there are option to stop at the secondary bottom rail. When, the, when you put material in here for that, then that option appears over here. So I can stop it at the top, intermediate top bar, or I can stop it at the immediate bottom bar. This is also available on the gate program. So if you have a kick plate at the bottom of the gate, you would set your 
secondary bottom rail where you want it and then you would just select that you want the pickets to stop there instead of going all the way to the bottom. Okay, that's a quick look at the horizontal rail. Let's go to the stair rail. Here again, I'm going to import a template and let's start with a masonry or wood step. That's one of the toughest ones to do and I'll load that. And you'll notice in the upper left corner here, maximum post spacing is set for NA, which means because if you evenly space the post going down the stairs, if it's a long run of stairs, that post may not hit the step correctly. So we want to specify exactly where that post sits in relation to the nose of the step. So we put all the information in and then I'm just going to click draw so you can see how this works. I'm going to go over here. I pick a point. It lays the steps out and then at the bottom it says stair treads on which posts will be placed. Well I'm just going to pick this step tread right here and right click and then I don't need a center post on the landing. I right click again and then it draws the rail and gives me the cut list and sets that post exactly four inches back from the nose. Okay. You can also, let's, let's do another imported template. Let's do a, here's one with a stair and stringer. Let's load that template. And you notice here, you've got stringer dimensions you can put in. And when I draw this, this looks like this. So that's what I think you should do. You should just go in, pick a template that's close to what you want, and then you can go back and make changes to that template. Put your own parameters in there. And then the beauty is when you get done and you you're, and this is something you use all the time, you can go down here at the bottom and you can export this template. So let me so I just go in here, I'll just call this demo stair one and I export it after I make my changes. So when I go to the import template list. There it's been added to the list. So all you do is you pick your template like a ramp rail, you load it, you change your dimensions, whatever, and your angle, say it's 10, and then you click draw and you're done. I'll show you one more stair rail. Let me do an import template here and we'll do a short stair and stoop rail. So I'll load that. And you can also check off this post at the top if you just want to make a continuous rail from the step over to the wall. So I'll just draw this and we'll see what it looks like. I'll right click and there's your rail. Okay. The other thing you can do, you, if you just want to draw, if you've got a job and all you need is just posts, you can do away with the bottom rail and you can just have post and top bar. You click draw and you'll get a rail that looks like this. This post and top bar only. Okay? Let's take a look at the fence program. So I click fence and here I want to import another template. Let's just do a four line wrought iron fence. So I'll load that. So you have all these dimensions. If you're punching through and putting a spear, that dimension A, dimension E is the post in relation to the top of the picket. If you're punching through the bottom bar, you put something in for B. We got three inches here. You can put slopes here. You can also do horizontal members and vertical pickets on this. Here we're going to add finials and ball caps. And let's see, I want to put a six inch border here, and I want to put a six inch border here. And then I'll just, and also when you've done that, then you can go in and then you can pick your finial here. You can pick one of these ones here. You can browse to whatever one you want. The same thing for the ball caps. And then I click draw, pick a point, and it draws the fence and gives you your cut list. Okay, like that. All right. Now, we're drawing a fence like this, you notice that you got channels punching through here. We do have. A command here. We'll go into this with more detail with the Auto Rail Basics Part 2, but the uh, Rail Wipeout command, I can wipe out these two channels. So it gives you the look of it punching through. The picket's still there. We haven't trimmed the picket because if we did that, then you would have a problem with losing your data from the cut list. So I'm going to draw another fence so you can see the versatility here. So I'm going to import this template here. 
and just click draw then I'll show you what we did to get this pick a point this is a spindle involved with this so I'll just click that and then there's the cut let's see you can see you can draw a fence that looks like that. that cool so what we did there we basically set up a special finial here to make that to get that look so this this loop and this sphere all one finial and everything set up that way so you can add all kinds of versatility to this okay and then there's a gate program let me click on that and uh, this is probably our most powerful part of this whole program is the gate program so I'm going to import a template here and I'm just going to use 16 foot standard gate and I'll load this so when you go in here it's very similar to the fence program you can do your punch through on your pickets your borders add finials whatever you want to do and then your members are here and your finials are here and I click draw and I'll pick a point and it draws this particular gate and cut list okay now I can also when you when you click on this you notice here we've got some boxes here use custom sketch so let me go to our tool palettes here and let me go to custom we have a custom sketch right here that we have okay I'm gonna explode that because I want to do all you need to do for a custom sketch feature is just draw the outline of the gate so I, in this case I want to make this design a little bit wider so I'm gonna stretch this six inches wider and then go back to the gate program I'm just going to use custom sketch and I'm just going to use all the default settings I had in there before and then it says at the bottom here select custom drawing I put a window around this and right click and it'll draw custom design just like that okay you can also do things like let me show you you can do louvers so let me show, we have one in here so when I go import template we have a two inch louver template I'll load that so you notice you get the horizontal members that you can use here pick a point and you get a gate looks like that with louvers in it and draw louvers instead of gates so a lot of versatility with the gate program let's do one more I'm going to import a template and it's, uh, we've got one called puppy pickets so this is alternating short pickets also so when I go in here and look go to vertical pickets I have add alternating short pickets and I've checked add finials because I you know I want to match the finials that are on the long picket I've also adjusted my maximum gap to two inches because I don't want the dog running through the gate and you can do this for fence program too so anyway I'm going to click draw and I'm going to come over here and pick a point and it's going to draw the gate with alternating short pickets with spears on it just like that that cool okay and if you say well I really don't I can stick it out that much you can just simply move this bar up it doesn't affect the cut list but it will affect your dimension and then you just take this go to here and redimension that okay like so. So that's a good overview of all the different routines in the AutoRail program. Check our website. We have also a lesson on what to do with these commands here. This is AutoRail Basics Part 2. Customizing AutoRail Part 1 covers all the different features of the box here that you see. And then Customizing AutoRail Part 2 goes over all of the features of adding custom shapes and custom sizes if you have a square tube that's an odd size or an odd size uh, rectangle you can easily add that to the AutoRail database and that no lesson will show you how to do that thank you take care now bye